Republicans are taking legal action to block uh, President Biden's student loan bailout, and one of them joins us now. Welcome, Mark Bronovich, Attorney General from Arizona, to the program. Mark, good to see you. So where do we stand in the legal action to push back on Joe Biden's bailout uh, of student loans? Well, first and foremost, we know what Joe Biden is doing is unconstitutional. 100%. No president, no, no Republican, no Democrat has this kind of authority. And as state AGs, we have been in the forefront of pushing back against the lawlessness of the Biden administration. And so we are working right now to develop theories because when we go into federal court, we want to make sure that we have the proper standing because we know the Biden administration is going to do everything they can to use procedural tricks to try to get the lawsuit thrown out. So we got to make sure we do it right. And I, as AG, have actually sued our state universities here. I've taken on the higher education establishment. So I know what it's like. It's like being Luke Skywalker going to the Death Star. And you got to make sure you got everything right. To, you're going to take out the Death Star. But Mark, once that money goes out the door, you can't put the toothpaste back in the bottle. You almost need an injunction once the lawsuit is filed until the merits of the case are heard. Otherwise, you're not going to get the money back from students where the loans were paid back, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when I sued the universities here, one of the things I kept saying is the question should be, why does it cost so much to get a college degree? When right. I went to Arizona State, same school your wife went to, um, it was six twenty-five a semester. I worked a part-time job, worked in the summer, and I had zero debt. That's what state universities are supposed to be. We we pay for them as middle-class taxpayers, and yet what the higher education establishment does is they limit competition. Um, they don't let you know community colleges offer four-year degrees, and that's why when you look at over the last twenty years, Sean, when you look at consumer goods like TVs, appliances, cell phones, they've all. Uh, gone down, adjusted for inflation. But when it comes to college education, it's gone straight up like a rocket. And there is no more permanent thing than a temporary government handout. So that's why we got to do everything we can to stop Joe Biden for doing something that he doesn't have the legal authority to do and actually will increase inflation and will increase the cost of college education for all of us. Yes, it's going to increase the cost. And, and we're not doing anything to your point to get to the root cause of why college expenses are going up. And frankly, I, and I've said this a million times, but until the colleges are on the hook for students who can't pay their loans back, they're not going to reduce the cost. But I want to switch gears on you, Mark, uh, talk about another issue that you're again leading on, and that's the fight on what's keeping woke ESG policies out of retirement funds. Um, where does that fight stand right now, ESG funds, and how do you protect the citizens of Arizona? Well, we have ongoing investigations and me and some of my colleagues, and this is actually, Sean, one of the most important fights and the most important fight that no one's talking about. ESG is the environmental social governance movement. And what you have is you have these big banks, hedge funds, money managers, literally with trillions of dollars of assets. And they're using that to pressure corporations that are not woke enough. And especially their focus now has been on energy producers, people that are involved in oil and gas. And that's why we're seeing investment in those industries go down. And you know, anytime that you have less of something and less investment in something, the price will go up. And that's why we're paying more for energy. And as a result, we pay more for groceries and everything else. And so in order to be woke, these managers are trying to what I believe is allegedly uh, is essentially colluding and they are not putting the interest. Their fiduciary duty is to maximize return on investments. And instead, what they're trying to do is maximize leftness and wokeness. And we are all paying the price of that in higher costs of goods and the less availability of things like oil and gas in our economy. And, and what's insidious is that these money managers like uh, or asset managers like BlackRock will take money yeah. from Americans who disagree with the policies of Larry Fink at BlackRock, who wants to push this ESG agenda. They don't want to invest in oil and gas. They want to make sure that everyone's getting to zero carbon in the companies they invest in. But they're using my money to do it. Um, I don't agree to that. I want, I want a return on my investment, but they're using my money to push their ESG environmental agenda. That makes no sense and is completely unfair. Well, and, and Sean, and the part of the problem is, is that you have like states like Arizona, and we have these giant investment funds, pension funds, retirement funds. People have 401ks out there, and you don't know. People don't know. I did a recent op-ed on this in the Wall Street Journal because you don't know that your money, right. your 401k, your IRA is being used to fund left-wing causes and actually cause higher prices. They should be focusing on returning the green in the form of higher return instead of 
green energy. And, and you make a good point because if you have a, a, a state retirement account, how your state invests that money or who they invest it with, you have no say over. Or if you work with a company and they have a 401k, you don't have a say where that money is in, invested with, you know, what money manager, and you're kind of stuck. And you're right, you, they're using your money for policies that you absolutely disagree with. And what, you know what burns me? This Larry Fink with BlackRock, he flies around on his own private jet around the world, but he's lecturing us and companies in America and around the world on these environmental policies that he does more to destroy on his private jet. The, as you know, Sean, the left is full of hypocrites. They are. And what they, it's the classic elitist where there's one set of rules for them and there's one set of rules for everybody else. And always remember, I remind folks, corporate America, you will never, you will never be woke enough for the far left. And like any alligator, eventually he's going to eat you, and they're just hoping he eats them last. But that's why we got to push back now against this hardcore radical agenda that's being forced down our throats. And, and just to make you know one last point here, you, you look at BlackRock, and I'm and I'm, I'm focused there right now. But there's many money uh, managers, asset managers who do this, but they, they have 11 million dollars under management. $11 trillion under management. You don't put that money in certain companies. Uh, that is a huge sway and a, a huge influence in how um, how companies navigate this ESG stuff. So again, it's a huge impact on free enterprise in America, and Larry Fink has a ton of control over it. Thank goodness we have uh, AGs like you who are willing to push back and stand up for the average investor's rights. Final word, Mark, 30 seconds. Uh, thank you very much, Sean. And the bottom line is this, is that um, when the Soviet Union collapsed, communism didn't die. All those folks just ended up in the environmental movement. So, so <laughs> much of what today is about green energy is all about controlling your lives because the AOCs of the world and the Joe Bidens of the world, whoever's talking is your piece, they want to be able to control you economically because then they control you the way you vote and what you think. And bringing attention to it matters. Mark Bronovich, thanks for the great work and thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it.